Welcome to the only daily podcast focusing on compliance news of the day. Each morning, start your day with a cup of coffee and Tom Fox, the voice of compliance, to hear about four of the top compliance, corruption, or leadership stories you will need to start your day. The Daily Compliance News is a production of the Compliance Podcast Network. June 24, 2020, the fourth estate edition. First up, from the Wall Street Journal, Wirecard's former CEO, Marcus Braun, is arrested. The recently departed chief executive officer of the company was arrested by police days after German payment company revealed a $2 billion hole in its books. It was a swift turn of events, what followed years of German regulators ignoring red flags around the once promising company. Munich prosecutors said Braun turned himself in and he was accused of inflating Wirecard sales volumes with fake income. Prosecutors said he was also under suspicion of making the company look more attractive to investors than the company actually was and cooperating with other perpetrators. He, of course, denied all wrongdoing. Uh, next up from the Financial Times, just a stunning, and I mean stunning, editorial, uh, lead editorial, full column on the op-ed page about the role of or rather lessons from the financial technology scandal. And if you've ever wondered about the role in the fourth estate in fighting bribery and corruption and fraud, uh, this is the best article that I've seen in years on this because it was really the FT that led the charge about reporting about the Financial Times. Obviously, the Wall Street Journal did this um, with uh, Elizabeth Holmes at Theranos, but the FT uh, for 18 months has been crying uh, uh, about, crying out, out loud about uh, Wirecard. Wirecard not only attacked the FT, but they had German prosecutors open investigations into both the FT itself and reporters. So kudos to the FT uh, for seeing this through. Uh, kudos to the reporters involved and kudos to um, the Fourth Estate for really leading uh, the uh, public comment about Wirecard and how it turned out to be the biggest fraud of the 2020s so far. Uh, next up, uh, for those who think uh, Facebook has gotten away with its absolute fawning over uh, Donald Trump and his hate-filled uh, content, uh, ad boycotts of Facebook keep growing. Uh, while Facebook uh, put on an upbeat presentation uh, that Clothing chain Eddie Bauer, the film distributor Magnolia Pictures, and Ben and & Jerry's Ice Cream announced they would stop advertising on the platform. This has, uh, They were joining companies such as Patagonia, The North Face, REI, and others in growing boycott that has targeted Facebook content moderation practices. Uh, clearly, uh, Facebook is out of step with the large majority of Americans who don't want to see the uh, hate-filled, racist content that the Trump administration and the Trump campaign puts out, and Mark Zuckerberg's fawning over Donald Trump for reasons uh, completely unknown may uh, well be uh, costing the company quite a bit. So uh, interesting development. If you want real change, you typically have to do it in the pocketbook. And then finally, uh, from the Wall Street Journal, uh, the Securities and Exchange Commission breathes a very large sigh of relief as in the Lou case, the court upheld profit disgorgement as an appropriate remedy uh, for Securities and Exchange uh, Commission actions. The court had been asked to make this uh, remedy uh, unavailable in cases. Lou, uh, convicted fraudster and admitted fraudster, wanted to keep all of his ill-gotten gains, and clearly uh, that ruling would have been antithetical to U.S. jurisprudence. So the Securities and Exchange Commission with a big win, but they now can only go after net profits, not sales. The Daily Compliance News is a production of the Compliance Podcast Network and a proud member of C-Suite Radio. Thanks so much for listening. I hope you'll join me again tomorrow.